Hi, my name is Devin Cotillion and I teach fifth grade in South Carolina. We are in our home stretch until state testing and I wanted to share with you a resource that my students use to keep track of the games that they play in our math program. In our district, we use the McGraw-Hill Everyday Math Program and one of the key parts of the program is using games to enhance learning. In our district, we have a group of teachers who focuses on personalized learning. They spent time creating a poster for us to hang in our classroom so students could visually see the games that they were, they were playing and the skills and standards that it was meeting. I knew I wanted to take that one step further so students could easily track the games that they were playing and the amount of time that they were spending on each game. So let's take a look at the checklist that I created for my students. To create the checklist, I just used Google Sheets and just created the amount of columns and rows that I needed for each game. I decided to number all of my games so that the students could quickly find the game that they were needing to play from their assessment. And I could just add a number to their assessment rather than the title of the game. Um, and then I also created a little screenshot of what the picture looks like that matches that game so that they can see what it looks like when they're on their checklist. And then I created the other column that added the skills and standards so they knew which skills that they were working on with that specific game, especially if you use the differentiation option that allows students to analyze their own tests, they can come and look for the skills that they need to work on and then click their needs practice. I gave them three tries to work on that game just so that they're not playing any one game too often. Um, I don't always use the learning path with my math games. Sometimes I have specific games that I want them to play, but if it's a time where I'm having them use their learning path, they know which games they need to play and how many times that they need to play it. Um, to create this, if you click on a cell, you can click insert and then image, image in cells, and then you can drag and drop any screenshot that you've created on your desktop into there. Um, and then also in that cell, you can also click insert um, down to the checkbox, and that just adds a checkbox for them to click in and keep track of the games that are playing. It's very easy. Um, the kids have done really well keeping up with it. Um, all they have to do is check boxes and be able to look from their test to their games. So it's pretty easy for them to manage on their own. In our district, we use Google Classroom as our learning management system. So if you'd like to share the math learning path on Google Classroom, just create an assignment, title it, and attach the file from your Google Drive. Once you have attached it from your Google Drive, make sure you change it from student can view the file to make a copy for each student so that then each student has their own copy that they can edit and pick the games that they want to play. On the right hand side, just pick the classes that you want to have the assignment assigned to. I always click a due date of the very end of the year so that they have that until the end of the year to work on and create a topic if you need to and then just click assign and it will pop up in their classwork tab. Throughout the year, we've used this checklist in a lot of different ways. Every time that my students take a unit assessment, the assessment is coded with a triangle and a number. When they miss a problem on their assessment, they know that they can go into their math learning path and mark that skill or game that they need more practice. When we have time in our small group block, when students are independently working, they can go to their math learning path and see which games that they need to practice. And then they can keep track of how many times they've played that game. If you know anything about everyday math games, there are some that are a little bit easier than others. So students generally will go to a game that's just easy and not necessarily one that's gonna help them reinforce the skills that they need extra practice on. Another differentiation option for the math learning path checklist is to give students back their assessments that's not coded. 
This allows students to analyze their own results and determine which games would best help them reinforce the skills that they missed. So let's take a step into my classroom and watch one of my students use their checklist when they get their test back. This resource can be adapted to any menu type activity. You could track how many times that you're reading fiction text versus nonfiction text or different grammar activities that students need to choose from. The goal is to really put students in the driver's seat of their learning. Students will often find more value in the things that they're learning if they know why it's important to the skills that they need more help on.